Hey guys, this is Amira Rakugo. Guess I'm just full of surprises lately. Well, you know, here in the Netherlands we have a saying. He who says A must also say B. Which is a fancy way of saying, finish what you start. And so, impulsive as it may be, I've decided to wrap up the Space Quest series alongside my Power Slave LP. So don't worry, I'll still be doing Power Slave, but I figured I might as well get this thing over with already. So, here we are. Space Quest V, Roger Wilco in the next mutation, the next to last game in the series. Which has an interesting bit of development history. You see, by the time the game got pitched, the two guys from Andromeda broke up. Since Mark Crow had been wanting to move to Sierra's sister company Dynamics, and when he heard SQ5 was going to be developed there, he grabbed the opportunity and left Scott Murphy back at Sierra. But despite the change in developer, uh, SQ5 doesn't have that many differences in gameplay compared to the previous one, since Ken Williams, the Sierra CEO, did order the team to still be using the SCI, Sierra Creative Interpreter, if you will remember, instead of Dynamics' uh, in-house development system that was used in games like Rise of the Dragon and Heart of China. But uh, in terms of story, Yes, here I go again, saying the story is better than the previous game, but in this case it's very true. In Space Quest 4, it's not like before, where there's a huge chunk of exposition at the start and end of the game, and everything in between is just random hijinks and parody. Space Quest 5's story is far more in-depth than previously, as you'll see. But it's also a bit more on the serious side this time around. I guess Mark couldn't come up with as many gags solo as he could together with Scott. But luckily, there's still room for some interesting gags, parodies and references in Grand Space Quest tradition. But sadly, due to Dynamics' shaky financial situation at the time, it was decided not to make a deluxe CD-ROM version this time around. So, that means there's no voice acting in the game. But, that's where I come in, for better or for worse. But enough smarm already, let's play! My typing skills leave a little to be desired. Oh well. Ah, the good old Sierra fanfare. Shiny too. So, let's get into the introduction. Space Quest 5. Way back from good old 1993. That's 16 years ago already. God damn, I feel old. <laughs> Roger Wilco, the next mutation. I think the logo just suddenly yeah, got a bad case of acne or something. of the original Star Trek team this th this time around. As you'll see, yeah, there's a lot of Star Trek references going on in this game. Captain's Log, SCS Excalibur, Stardate 2709.67, Fleet Admiral Roger Wilco commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of space known as the Menudo Triangle. I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievements as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. Wow, Roger's gone up in the world. Uh, next part? Oh. I go forward with total confidence in my ship and my crew, yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of traveling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Each night my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said would one day be my wife. I know she's out there. Somewhere. Holy crap, he just stole my catchphrase! <laughs> oh. I, I didn't steal it from here either. I kinda misquoted Q from the Star Trek Next Generation finale when I came up with that. Well, when I ad-libbed it at first. Eh, moving on. But that's not important right now. The fate of trillions rides on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. 
As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, I must follow the supreme guideline. Which is... To boldly go where no man has... No, no, no. To bravely traverse with no creature has traversed... Mm, that's not it. Ah, skip it. That's the spirit, Roger. Enough smarm. Let's get this show on the road. Admiral, strike ships coming in at point three five. Shields up, battle stations, lock weapons. Neutron beams locked, proton torpedoes armed. Tactical, fire neutron beams, helm, hard to port. Cadet Wilco, what in the name of the Seven Star Cluster are you doing in the bridge simulator? Get your sorry carcass out there and get back to class where you belong, Space Cadet! And if I catch you in there again without permission, I'll have you tossed out of the Academy so fast you'll get warp disorientation! Yep! <laughs> Roger didn't actually suddenly get a promotion to Admiral or anything like that. You'll notice on the left there, this thing looks oddly familiar. His illusions of spacefaring grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk, Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy, where he has enrolled himself in an attempt to realize his lifelong dream of becoming a starship captain. The last several months have not been easy for our hero, what with having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. <laughs> Sounds like my ill-fated attempt at studying Japanese. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that fate was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. Aw, oh, goofy sad music, isn't that cute? And... Ah, it's gotta be said, I fucking love this rendition of the Space Quest theme. It's so cheery. Oh. Yeah, well, <clears throat> we better not hang around uh, for too long, because we gotta get to class. A small janitorial closet is situated at one end of the hallway. But that's not where we're supposed to be right now, so let's keep going. This is the door to conference room A. That's not the classroom either. There's a couple of students, I guess. Could this be it? This door leads to one of the Academy's classrooms. Currently, the students in your Space Piloting 101 class are taking the StarCon Aptitude Test. Ugh, tests. Why do I get the feeling Roger's not terribly good at that? <laughs> Gotta love the peanut style uh, chatter there. Sorry I'm late, Professor. You mean the Starcon aptitude test is today? Yes, sir, I'll get started right away. What's that? Come talk to you after class? Yes, sir. <laughs> So yeah, the test. Better save the game because this is where I can very quickly find myself get kicked out of the game if I screw up. Uh, yeah, test. Obviously Roger has absolutely no frickin' idea what these answers are. 
what the answers to the tests are. So, what's the one thing to do in a situation like this? Cheat. But, you may have noticed, this thing won't take kindly to that. A Proctormatic 9000 anti-cheat droid floats malevolently about the classroom, maintaining a vigilant lookout for any student hijinks during this SAT test. Currently, the droid is monitoring you with its visual scanners. Best keep your eyes on your own test. So, gotta carefully check the answers at our neighbor's table while he's not looking. It's the fourth one. The questions and the answers to them are pretty hilarious, but I won't be going over them right now because otherwise we'd be here all day. Well, there's only ten questions, but still. None of the above. Well, just for shits and giggles, I'll show you what happens if I get caught cheating. Oh shit. Uh-oh. Busted. <laughs> Maybe you should have taken the correspondence course. And quite unusually, we get a very catchy little beat to accompany our unfortunate failure. And it goes on for quite a uh, long time, too, if you let it, but... We're not here to enjoy the tunes, we're here to get places. So, check the answer. Whoop. Three. No, I'm not cheating. What gave you that idea? Uh, crap, I uh, didn't see the answer there. <laughs> Paying too much attention to all the random background details, but... Wow. Can't exactly blame me, because uh, the graphical style in this game has gone up quite a bit uh, from the previous one. It's a uh, lot more detailed, a lot more comic book uh, like <sighs> I need to stop narrating and just pay attention to the answers already or else we'll still be here all day <laughs> sorry turn around nothing to see here <laughs> And that's the test. The test's over already? Yes, sir. I agree that cleaning the Academy Crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. I'll get right on it. Incidentally, if we had if we hadn't cheated on the test, we would have gotten launched out of the Academy just as we would have had we been caught cheating. Well, in order to clean stuff, we'll need some janitorial supplies, and what better place to get janitorial supplies from than a janitorial supply closet? <laughs> Plagiarism, but we'll let it pass because it's funny. You cram the scrub o -matic into your seemingly bottomless pocket. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around in this kind of game. You cram the safety cones into your seemingly bottomless pocket. What to do about the rest of the stuff? Take care of it the only way Roger knows how. And the ships in the background here are rife with all sorts of funny messages and pop culture references, and you may notice this guy here. Well, not an interesting description, but you've probably seen him before somewhere.
And down here is the Academy Crest, which we're supposed to be cleaning. So, um, first we put down the safety cones, because if we don't, everyone's just gonna walk all over the crest while we're busy cleaning, and that's not exactly helpful. Also notice we have some buckazoids, cash, money, spendola, but they serve absolutely no purpose in this game for whatever reason. Put down the scrub o -matic. Pops open like a butterfly. Sort of. How does this thing work? Yeah! And yeah. Have to scrub off all the dark parts of the crest until it starts well, until all of it is gone and it starts sparkling, like Edward Cullen. It's a little tedious, but doesn't take very long, if you know what you're doing. Meanwhile... As you can see, Ambassador Wankmeister, we run a very tight ship here at the Academy. This institution is the pride of the Star Confederation and one of the best of its kind in the known universe. It's nice to see our tax buckazoids aren't going completely to waste, Captain Quirk. Oh, Shatner, what would we do without you? Here we are, Miss Wankmeister. This is the main rotunda. It was dedicated on Stardate 0920... Ambassador? Excuse me, aren't you Roger Wilco, the man who foiled the Sarian some years back? Continuity alarm! Look familiar? And I don't just mean the Wayne's World parody. She's not too bad looking, I must say. Suddenly, it all comes rushing back. It's her! The woman from the holodisc in Space Quest 4! Now is your big chance, Roger! Say something clever and romantic! Uh, egg, um, I mean, uh, yes. Way to sweep her back onto her feet, Rog. Nice to see you haven't lost your golden touch with women. <sighs> Couldn't have put it any better myself. Excuse me, Ambassador, but we should be heading to the conference now. You're not at all what I expected, Wilco. See you around. Hold on a minute, Cadet. Looks like you missed a spot. <laughs> yeah, you may have noticed by now, but Captain Quirk's a bit of a jerk. Uh, sir, you better watch your step. The floor is still really wet and just a little bit... ...slippery. <laughs> nice rug, Quirk. Is that a toupee or a roadkill? Ugh! You did that on purpose, Wilco. I'm placing you on double secret probation. One more screw-up and your space cadet days are over. Oh god. My Shatner impression is terrible. <laughs> oh well. I'm not trying to win an Oscar for best acting here, I'm playing Space Quest V. But hopefully you're all entertained by my pathetic attempts at acting. Whoa, what do, what do we have here? There's an awful lot of vermin crawling around here for a space station. Ooh, what will the outcome be? 
Well, something tells me this critter is going to screw up something. Huh? What was that? Excuse me, Captain, you didn't raise your hand. Now, as I was saying, Ambassador Wankmeister, we are a fairly remote installation, and I simply can't spare the ships to launch the kind of operation you suggest. I'm afraid you don't understand the potential ramifications of this problem, Admiral. If the sludge bandits continue to illegally dump toxic waste whenever and wherever they choose, the environmental consequences could be staggering. Entire planets could be devastated. I think you overstate the issue, Ambassador. Even so, we have more than enough ships on patrol to put a stop to these sludge bandits, as you call them. Look, Ambassador, we have top-notch ships staffed with the finest crews in the galaxy. Starcon accepts only the best and brightest for fleet training. You look, Roghead! Illegal dumping is going on in this sector right under your polyweave! Our patrols have located dumping sites on four planets in the G6 Quadrant alone! Classy, Roger. Hey, this is made from real hair! Uh, <clears throat> In any case, I'd like to hear more about these alleged dumping sites. Perhaps over dinner this evening. I have already transmitted the coordinates to Starcon Central Command along with a list of suspected sites that we haven't been able to check out yet. Well then, that settles it. Captain Quirk, you shall go to these sites and investigate Ambassador Wankmeister's allegations. Admiral, I'll be going along as an observer. I'm afraid that's impossible. Regulation strictly forbids civilian participation in military operations. Uh, Admiral, I think having the Ambassador along would be a good idea. I'm sure the two of us could develop a productive working relationship. Admiral, may I remind you that I am an official representative of the people of Quadrant G6 with full ambassadorial status and as such not subject to... Now, now, Ambassador, I'm sure Captain Quirk will do everything necessary to resolve the situation. There's no need for you to hinder him on this mission. This is my system and my people we're talking about here. I'm going on that ship and that's all there is to it. Case closed. We're adjourned. Good day, gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh great, the savior of the universe in all his glory. Isn't there a mop somewhere with your name on it? Way to go, Raj. Another sterling performance. Yeah, I caught the jerk trying to sneak some answers off my test. Shh, here he comes. This is awful. I totally biffed on my SAT test. I'll never make captain now. That's too bad, Cadet. Shplock. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. How'd you make out, Roger? I haven't seen my score yet. The SAT scores for our class are posted on the bulletin board, Rog. I sure hope you made out better than I did. Well, I have a feeling it's going to work out fine... somehow. This would be the bulletin board, I take it? He looks impressed. That must be good. Cadet Wilco, on behalf of the administration, I would like to congratulate you on receiving a perfect score in your SAT. Not in the entire history of Starcon Academy has a cadet achieved such high marks. You should be proud. On the recommendation of our test analysis computer system, you are to begin training for a captaincy aboard one of our fine star cruisers. Captain Quirk will post your assignment. You've done the Academy proud! Sincerely, current Chief Commanding Officer's name here. Your test results. Maybe you ought to have it framed. Well, well, well. This time he's going up in the world for real. Complete with Star Trek II style uniform and all. And so, having undergone an intensive weekend captain's training seminar on the planet Oakhurst, Roger is shuttled to his new command, the SCS Eureka. Notice the sly reference to Sierra's base of operation there. Well, I think it's uh, near there anyway, Oakhurst. Hey, that's not a starship, it's a garbage skull! Figures. Ay, ay. Once a janitor, always a janitor. Hey, eh, Rog? And now we get to meet the crew. Hello, sir. I'm Subcorporal Drool, your nav and weapons officer on this heap. 
Flo is the name. I'm your comm specialist, grade 4. Hello, crew. I'm your new commanding officer, Captain Roger Wilco. I know some of you may not be as excited to be serving on Eureka as I am, but I promise you this. We are going to be the best gosh darn garbage sco in the entire Star Confederation. We have nothing to fear but fear itself, so hold your heads high, men. We shall overcome. All we are is dust in the wind, born free, running wild, with liberty and justice for all. So let's be all we can be. Remember, it's not just a job, it's an adventure! It was a chair, really. Looks like we got a live one here, Flo. You said it, Drool. Well, it seems being made captain hasn't diminished Roger's reckless enthusiasm any. Not to mention his incompetence. Right, so, we're on board our very own starship, the Eureka. So, let's see what the others have to say. Try that from the command chair. Well, I don't feel like sitting down just now. I th think I'll uh, have a look around for now. So, we won't be talking to him just yet, I guess. This automated computer console controls critical functions of the Eureka, but what precisely these functions are, you haven't a clue. An inaudible subsonic hum emanates from the machinery on the ceiling of the bridge. Yeah, well, not very interesting. Let's have a look back here. There's one more crew member we have to meet. Well, well, looky here. Our brand spanking new squeaky clean neatly pressed captain has arrived. Pleased to meet you, uh... Please, my friends call me Cliffy, but you can call me Clifford. I'm chief engineer for the Eureka. Pardon my awful Scottish accent. What the... Sorry about the mock, Captain. I dropped my wrench down the head. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I have some work to get back to. But yeah, Cliffy's a, obviously meant to be a Scotty XP, so... It's only natural I gave him a Scottish accent. Good night, James Doohan, wherever you may be. This is your chief engineer's toolbox. It's filled with the gadgets and gizmos Cliffy uses to keep the Eureka spaceworthy. And there's bound to be something useful among all this. Cliffy's toolbox is filled with miscellaneous bits of junk and tools of every size, shape, and description. As well as a tag with the colorful warning, Touch my tools and die. <laughs> Pardon me. Anyways, what we'll be needing is this thingy. A Schmier's brand crafts alien laser cutting torch. Thinking this might be a handy item, you take it with you. Not this, not this. Not here. No. No. Mm. What's this thing? High tech thingamabob. No, that doesn't sound very useful. This device is specially designed to cut through the shrink wrap on software packages. I those things can get mighty pesky sometimes. Yep. It's a hole punch. Heaven knows what Cliffy uses this for. Well, it's mine now. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be the last object. Spare fuse. In order not to irk Cliffy, you put back the tools where you found them. Goody goody. Save the game again because what I'm about to do may be highly stupid. There's a service tunnel back here. High voltage circuit fuse. This little diagram here shows what each fuse is supposed to be doing. Scrutinizing the diagram below the power bus, you see the word lighting on the schematic next to this fuse. Yeah, let's just leave that there uh, for now. The wiring chart indicates this fuse controls the main transporter power coupling. Leave that there as well. 
the unenlightening phrase VGA EGA interlock appears on the diagram next to this fuse. <laughs> yeah, gotta love the retro look. Let's just leave that there as well. There is a smudge on the diagram that partially obscures the writing next to this fuse. Our supply is all that is visible of the description. Wow, no harm could possibly come from pulling this fuse. Oops! Guess that wasn't the right fuse to pull, Raj! Yeah, like I said, not a good idea to be messing around with that one. As for the other fuses... Cockpit glazing blemish removers and... Life support systems. Warning! Deactivating life support may be hazardous to your health! No shit, Sherlock. That will not be of any help. Yeah. Turning on the elevator with that button, and then going down into the shuttle bay. Where we can find another amusing way to put us out of our misery. Because what is the one thing you should never do in a shuttle bay? Open the airlock! Yep. Nice move, Ace. Really spectacular. So, I guess we should try avoiding that in the future. From now on. Right, well. Enough messing around. Uh, no, wait. There's one last little thing I want to do before I do what I'm supposed to be doing. So here is the science lab and transporter room. Needless to say, this has led to some interesting experiments by rambunctious crew members on past voyages. Naturally, I can step on the transporter pad here. Also, you notice uh, the smell and taste icons have disappeared in this game, sadly. And we now have two of these. This is for simply talking, and this one is for giving orders. So we order the transporter to energize. Which proves to be not a very smart move. Handy transporter safety tip number 21. Beaming directly into deep space may cause serious injury or death. Right. Now we've messed around not long enough, so it's time to finally get doing what we're supposed to be doing. And the crew pretend to look busy as soon as Roger enters the bridge. Alright, who put the whoopee cushion there? Fess up. Well, here we have three little buttons. I said we have three little buttons. For engineering, science, and self-destruct. Um, let's not mess around with the self-destruct just yet, shall we? Well, now we can finally have a chat with the crew. Since we'll be working together, I thought it would be nice if we got to know each other a bit, Flo. I'm sure you did, sir, but it won't. Sheesh, who poured vinegar in your breakfast flakes this morning? My life stinks and it's all your fault, sir. I don't follow you. You're a man, right? Yes. Well, there you go. Wow. I guess Roger really never can catch a break around women. What was your previous posting, crewman? Previously I was assigned to the Flemma, sir. But the self-important male swine, I mean captain, and I didn't see eye to eye to eye. He was just like my fourth husband. You'll have to excuse Flo. She so has a bit of a problem dealing with male authority figures. But she's really not so bad if you get to know her. Can it, Lobster Boy? Sheesh. How did Roger end up with these screwballs? Oh well. What happy set of circumstances left the Eureka Captain's chair open for me? The Eureka's previous commanding officer accidentally fell out the airlock without a spacesuit. That's terrible. If you say so, sir. 
Yeah. Yes, Captain? Tell me a little about yourself, Drool. My personal life is none of your business, sir. I'm just trying to create a friendly atmosphere here, Subcorporal. We may be together for a long while. Thoughtful, sir. Yeah. They're never seen or heard from again after this game, sadly. How long have you served on the Eureka, Subcorporal? Too long. As soon as my tour is up, I'm out of here. Why is that, Corporal? My career in Starcon hasn't exactly skyrocketed, sir. I rather hoped I wouldn't spend the last years of it on a garbage sco. Well, maybe there's something I can do to help. Not likely, Captain. Not if you'll excuse me, I have some work to get back to. What can I do to help you perform your job more efficiently? Stay out of my way, sir. Right. Well, time to order the crew around a bit. Hail's ship. Not sure who will be hailing, but... This is the SCS Goliath. Who's using this frequency? Oh, I might have known. It's you, Wilco. Just what in the name of the Seventh Star Cluster do you think you're doing? I uh, was just um, testing out the comm circuits. You pinhead! This is a priority frequency! Now get off this frequency and stay off! Ambassador Wankmeister and I have an important mission ahead of us. And we don't need to be discerned by Idle Prater on the comlink. Goliath out! Yeah, you'll notice the shameless little plug there for Sprint. They paid to have Sierra advertise for them in this game. As well as Leisure Suit Larry 5. Well... Not that that's of any concern to us, of course. Hail Starcon. Hailing, sir. We are cleared for departure, Captain. We are ordered to proceed to Gangularis, PU, and Kizurazgabai for refuse recovery missions. Why do those names make me feel slightly uncomfortable? Right then. Play in a course. What coordinates, Captain? And here we run into a little bit of copy protection because the only way to find the coordinates is to look in the game's manual. But fortunately, I have the codes printed out right here. So, uh, first off, let's head off to Gangularis. Allons-y. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Light speed. We'll go to warp as soon as we're clear of the station, sir. Adventure ho! Oh no, it's the Predator! Or is it? My, this all seems strangely familiar for some reason. Well, now that we're finally underway, I s I'd say it's time to leave it at here for now. So, join me next time as we head off into adventure and find out just what exactly that person was we saw just now and why she wants Roger dead so badly. So, hope you enjoyed this first part of the LP. I'm Amiura Dakago, and we'll be seeing each other out there somewhere. Bye for now.